All right, what is up, everyone? I hope everyone is having a great day. This is going to be a very spoiler-filled review slash first impressions of Sparking Zero. So if you guys don't want to be spoiled if you're waiting for the game to be released for the regular, you know, PS5, Xbox, and PC variants of the game. Um, and you don't want to be spoiled, click off. But if you are ready for first impressions, let's get right into it. So I have put in... As of recording this video, 23 hours in this game. So I feel like my first impressions, very valid. I have put in roughly a days of gameplay. I have completed roughly 90% of all the story modes. I have all but Jiren's story mode to complete. So I will definitely be completing that today. And I will be having a video later for my Platinum Trophy run because I am going for the Platinum. So when it comes to this game, right... And I'll probably throw some B-roll in there, some gameplay in the background. But, you know, this game is long awaited. People have waited 17 years. I believe Budokai Tengaichi 3 it was either 2006 or 2007. Um, I'll fact check myself. So people have been waiting 16 or 17 years for this game. Or six or 17 or 18 years for this game. I included myself, you know. First time I played Budokai Tengaichi 3... It was back in like 2010, 2011. I got it for the Wii. And then it wasn't until about four years ago I got an emulator to play it on my PC, you know, high, you know, high res, 4K, 2K, 60 FPS. So I've put hundreds of hours into the original Budokai and Budokai Tengaichi series, all six. They had a six year span where they released a game and I played the hell out of it. Every single one of those. I think the least time was probably in Budokai 2 or Budokai 1 because those are shorter games. You can't do as much. So when it comes to this game and how it runs, it really does run like Budokai Tengaichi 3. Um, when it comes to the button setup, you know, the button setup is 90% similar, right? The only difference is really um, when you're flying around, when you're grabbing an opponent, and when you're doing your super moves, like your Kamehamehas, your your ultimates, like your spirit bombs or stuff like that, that's the only button layout change I've noticed. And I'm okay with that. You know, I feel like they did that for the mapping to make the game run better on, you know, current gen consoles. Because instead of inputting three button, like three buttons at once, you only do two. So it does, it makes it a little simpler. It, it took a minute to get used to it. Um, but within like an hour, you get a good feel for it and you get better and it, it comes back to you when it comes to the story mode, I'm going to be completely honest. Is it the most fleshed out story mode where you're getting app pretty much a interactive anime? Mostly I would say yes. Um, I think the most fleshed out canon stories probably in Budokai Tengaichi 2, 3 or Kakarot, right? Those games did a really good job of mirroring the manga and the anime like one-to-one -one. this game they do focus more on the what if scenarios right like what if i'll throw up a snippet right here these are spoilers what if goku goes super saiyan in the saiyan arc right like the what ifs what if vegeta goes super saiyan during namek like there are some crazy what if scenarios that they flesh out a little bit and there are I'm not joking. When it comes to the canon storyline, it's only about half the game. The other half of this game is the what if scenarios or the sparking episodes, what they call it. And I love that. I love that. You know, a lot of people at first, I was kind of, I wouldn't say upset, um, but a little disappointed, maybe not, probably not even the right word that they didn't do like full, like animated scenes. Cause what happens is in the main story, you complete a, a scenario and there will kind of be like a slideshow of certain points. Like say you're playing through Piccolo's story mode. Um, his story, you know, you fight Raditz, you fight Nappa, and then he doesn't come back until Frieza. So in that big time gap between his storyline, they'll do like a slideshow of what happened in between. And of course they do that because there's like 10, 11 playable character story modes. And you don't want to rewatch the same animation over and over again. So it's kind of just exposition how they do it. So when it comes to that, I'm okay with that. You know, I've come to terms with it and I really do enjoy all the what ifs, right? And they even have um, 
story modes for for bad guys, right? You got your your Jiren, who's more of an anti-hero. You got your Frieza, who's definitely a villain. You've got your Goku Black, 100% villain. And in the story mode, spoiler, there are what if, um, or I want to call them branched timelines where they win. There's timelines in Frieza where he wins. He beats the Z Fighters. So there's timelines with Goku Black. He beats Vegito. He ends up killing all mortals, and he's the only god remaining. So these are crazy what if scenarios, and they honestly give you goosebumps. And big spoiler. One of the bigger ones that I um, couldn't believe was Gohan Black instead of Goku Black, right? This is spoiler filled, so I do apologize. You should have clicked off. Great game. Great game. I'm done talking about the story mode. Um, it's just very fun, super fun. 23 hours of gameplay. I'm not even 100% done with the story mode and all the what ifs now. I'm, of course, going for 100%. I'm rambling here because I, I love this game, right? When it comes to the mechanics, the online play, and everything, it's it really is Budokai Tengaichi 3 in, um, on current gen. Now, I've said this before. Or I was thinking this myself. I haven't seen anyone else make this comparison. This story mode is very, very similar to Budokai 3. If you guys ever played Budokai 3, you selected a character, and you fought through their story mode the entire time. It's very similar to that. They took aspects of all the previous games and they compiled it to make one great game, right? So is this your traditional Budokai Tengaichi 3 storyline where it's linear, you play through one time, and it's canon? No, it's that plus some. Because you can get the canon storyline and you can get endings that aren't canon. So you have, and I've been speedrunning this stuff, skipping dialogue, not skipping it, but reading ahead and going forward. And I'm 23 hours in, I'm still not done. So you have so much gameplay with this game. It's ridiculous. And I, I've i barely played online. I've only played two matches, one both, obviously. I haven't played the World Tournament. And I haven't done um, too much dueling with like friends. But overall, with 23 hours into this game, I'm going to say it's probably, probably is my favorite Dragon Ball game of all time, you know. Budokai 3, Budokai Tengaichi 2, which is my personal favorite, hold special places in my heart. But this is a modern take on it. This pretty much increases everything to 60 FPS. Um, animation is beautiful. Um, I've hardly seen any glitches. It's very rare you see a game so polished at release. So often you see studios rush out a game and it's not done, right? This game, I've only had like, two glitches where I had to like restart a battle because a character glitched out. That's it. And that's crazy for a game that released in 2024. Now I know I'm rambling. Um, when it comes to overall the rating of the game, I'll probably give the game, man, I want to give it a 10. I want to give it a 10 so badly, but there's few little nitpicks I have with the game. Like one thing's the final thing I'm going to say, the beam struggles for whatever reason, um, I get the trade-off. Um, when you're beam struggling with someone, um, instead of doing the rotation on the analog sticks, you do, you press triangle, and then you have the option to boost your character. So you have up to three boosts. Every boost you you click if you choose to, it'll then cause your character to be tired and exhausted for like one bar of stamina or energy. So you're pretty much left open for anything until that. And there's nothing you can do that I've seen to make it go by. So if you boost a beam struggle three times, your character's left wide open until that exhaustion wears out. And you're left open for three bars. They can attack you, power up, attack you. I wish they'd change it. Um, maybe just make it a little quicker. You're just left open too often. So because of those tiny little nitpicks I have, I'm going to give this game a 9.5 out of 10. I love it. Big Dragon Ball fan. I already showed you. You see these Dragon Ball posters. You see all those pop figurines. 90% of these are Dragon Ball. So 9.5 out of 10. Please, guys, if you enjoyed this game and you enjoyed this video, leave a like. Subscribe to the channel. I will be having a Platinum Trophy video coming out soon. This is probably going to be a very uncut video with some like gameplay here and there. So thank you guys so much for watching. Um,
That's going to do it. I'm out. Bye.